Next, we're joined by Hong and Kelsey. Uh, Hong is a founding member of the Argo Project, and prior to founding Acuity, he was the Argo team manager at Intuit, and he built the control plane that's used to manage hundreds of Kubernetes clusters and thousands of namespaces. Hong has extensive experience in distributed system projects ranging from storage to cloud infrastructure to SpringPath, Cisco, and Yahoo. Hong received his MS in electrical and computer engineering, from Carnegie Mellon University. And we're also joined by Kelsey Hightower. Kelsey is a principal engineer at Google working on Google's cloud platform. He's helped develop and refine many Google cloud products, including Google's Kubernetes engine, cloud functions, and API gateway. Kelsey spends most of his time with executives and developers spanning the global Fortune 1000, helping them understand and leverage Google technologies and platforms to grow their businesses. Welcome, Hong. Kelsey. Awesome. I'm excited to be here. So, man, home. I remember when hey, I saw Kelsey. Argo CD for the first yeah. time, and I was like, um, you know, why would you build something like this in the world of Kubernetes? So today I want to go and explore the whole present, future, and the past that got us to this point. So we're just going to cover a bunch of things today, and I just want you to give me that authentic look, that maybe the look that people haven't seen before when it's like building platform tools inside of a company like the one you just came from. So we're just gonna jump off a little bit, maybe give people a little bit of the day-to-day -day kind of activities you were doing that led up to the creation of Argo CD. Yeah, definitely. So we create Argo to solve the practical problem because when we look at over the Intuit landscape, we have so many clusters, so many segments and so many namespace to manage. And in the end, we figured out, hey, when we look at the landscape about open source, there's no open source project actually trying to give you a multi-cluster management control plan for clusters, especially for the deployment pattern. And that's why we decided, hey, we got Argo workflow worked fine. And how about we create another open source project, which is called Argo CD. And so as to we moving towards Argo routes, so every single product we created was trying to solve a particular use case added into it. However, because we use it at Intuit in production and we use it in large scale, so we were able to put all our expertise and experiences into it and make it better and better. Yeah, one thing I like about the whole story and the origins of Argo CD is that a lot of times tools like these will come from like a dedicated product company. You know, look, when you're in a product company, you don't really have to use it in production, even though we might try to, and you don't have to deal with like the organizational issues of a larger enterprise. But one thing I think that's unique about this particular story, you like a lot of people that are probably listening to this call, like you have a bunch of Kubernetes clusters. Look, Kubernetes is pretty great out of the box, but we all know at some point you're going to be developing some custom tooling to either manage rollouts or do something that is filling a gap in Kubernetes. So it sounds like it was born out of practicality, like you had a real world issue and you just decided to solve it for internal, but then turn it into an open source project. Yeah, basically that is our philosophy and actually applied to every single of the product. Like we saw the Argo workflow, basically that is a very advanced version of the Kubernetes job, which can only run one pod. But at some stage, you will definitely need to chain several pods together to do something more sophisticated. That is why we open source the Argo workflow as the core engine. And the same story for the CD and the routes, and I can definitely go in deeper if you want to know. Yeah, let's start with workflows. You know, when I think about Kubernetes and there are going to be some people that are new to Kubernetes, one thing that stands out about Kubernetes is this concept that you can have different types of workloads. Like the first workload I think most people get familiar with these days is the deployment workload, right? This concept of here is my application, all of its dependencies, and then I can hand that off to Kubernetes and it will do the right thing. But there was never really... Um, any workload type. I mean, we had cron jobs where you can set a timer and run a container every so often. We had things like batch jobs that you can run a job until completion, but there was no kind of workflow thing. Is this, you know, what made you, first of all, what was the use case that made you feel like, hey, we need a new workload type that Kubernetes can execute? And then, you know, how'd you go about doing that? Yeah, it has what's a long story. Basically, as the founding engineer, I started Argo Workflow project five years ago and uh, with several other key members. So 
Argo Workflow was quite a different product at that time. It is a full CI CD solution. And with a lot of features, a lot of the complications, it's quite heavy. So until then, we decided, hey, CRE is there, which is great, revolutionary. And we said, hey, we took that opportunity to see rewrite it because instead of trying to do some proprietary or very complicated thing, we want to make it Kubernetes native because that is kind of like the spirit of the open source. You want open source something and make it the core and enable others to do additional things. That basically makes Argo, uh, initial Argo and Argo workflow so successful, basically boom. So many people are building things on top of it because we made the right decision to make it the core and the Kubernetes native. Qflow, many other products basically are use it nowadays. Yeah, so it seems like you took all that, you know, this idea of, you know, a Kubernetes platform is a platform for building platforms and you took the advantage of extending it. And the one thing that I thought was super helpful early on in the Kubernetes community, like the deployment object, right? Like kubectl apply deployment. And I remember before deployments though, there was just replica sets. And right. I don't know if people remember those early days, but basically you have the command line tool, kubectl, trying to orchestrate the rollout of software. And if you close your laptop mid-flight, then it would just stop, right? And it was just this weird place like, does kubectl pick up and keep going? And so I don't think we ever gotten to a point where we had very sophisticated ways of rolling out software and then Argo rollouts show up. What was the kind of motivation behind that? And maybe give people a little bit of how it works and how it's a little different uh, than deployment. Yeah, we have no complaint about deployment. Deployment is the best generic workflow. I, I mean, deployment orchestrator, it works perfectly. However, when we look at the into the landscape and understand better the operational dynamics, we have two observations. First is a quite a good percentage of the instance actually happened around the software release. It's a big number, like 20, 50 percentage of that. Second, we paid the tens of million dollars to have the best logging solution, metric solution, tracing solution, great money. However, we use it most of the time trying to root cause some problem after something bad happened. So it's not trying to prevent something from happening, but rather than just root cause it. So then we say, hey, what's the point? So it's basically a no brainer at that time is we want to build this feedback loop by using the metrics data to drive the software release. That's how we start that idea. We talked with our application team, they really love it. And that we create the Argo routes. Nowadays, it is powering the TurboTax, QuickBooks in a large scale. And also to our big surprise is a lot of the other companies, including Spotify, Salesforce, PayPal, they share the same vision and, in, and quickly they joined us and adopted it in their side also. That was phenomenal. Yeah, so I always explain to people when people say, what are the Kubernetes best practices? And out of the box, look, there's basic functionality there. But I always tell teams, like, you have a couple of choices. You're going to either buy or build uh, some of these extensions. And these patterns are born in, in practice. They're born in production. And it sounds like you have to support your developers. My guess, you probably started like the rest of us. Just use deployments, write some scripts, see what happens. And then it sounds like you found a better pattern and you chose to serialize that pattern to this thing now we call Argo rollouts. Is, is that kind of the workflow? Yeah, basically that is, I, we don't want to make it to be more like proprietary or, or customized to us. Basically, we try to generate a general pattern. That's why we think that's beneficial to make it open source. And also we have this called uh, the analysis template, which is quite flexible. So you can hook up to, on any logic you want, and that can help you to drive the blue green or canary. So we think that's the future pattern. We, we understand the Kubernetes trying to be like bare mental, but they want to do the hard problem like in the hard way, make it solid. And it enables us to building on top of that to deliver more experience and better experience to others. All right, so look, you got workflows, you got rollouts. And so a lot of people would say, look, I'm just gonna take these things and probably glue them together in my CI CD tool and you can pick any tool and probably just grab those two components and enhance their capabilities in terms of interacting with Kubernetes. But if we just go through the product line again, we get this Argo CD. So it seems like things coming back full circle where you go from 
you know, this big monolithic thing that you decide as a team to break up before you introduce it to the community. And now that things are broken up, my guess is there's some still challenges around. Like one of the big problems I see is how do you do all the things we just talked about across like multiple clusters? What was going on at Intuit? And then how did you all circle back to this as a solution? Yeah, we need a multi-cluster support from day one. The reason is Intuit is a large enterprise environment. And uh, for a single application, you will have many environments in different clusters. You will have dev, staging, production. And even for the production, you may have three different regions to deploy. And you definitely need one control plane, make that much easier to orchestrate. Maybe you want to deploy to one environment, one cluster first, you then can propagate to the others. And that is basically is our rational reason behind it. So we need a multi-cluster manager. And secondly, one big reason we did Argo City in this way is also its UI, its application-centric view, because we think application is the best granuity for application developers, SRE, and the DevOps to collaborate and talk with each other and trying to getting things, uh, make things better. Rather than you using the namespace view or cluster view, that is just the granuity. It doesn't work in a large scale. Yeah, when I work with a lot of teams and companies, they always ask me about GitOps. Like, Kelsey, we got 100 clusters. How do we make sure that each of these clusters have the right set of configs or running the right apps, different versions? And also, how do we implement all of these patterns? And one approach I've seen people do is like uh, the pool model, right? Mm -hmm. They'll set up these clusters, configure them all to point to one Git repository, make the change, and then bam, the change rolls out to all their clusters. Worst case, everything goes down at the same time. Right. If, when I looked at Argo CD, it seems like you took a different approach. What approach is that? That basically is we are not trying to go to a big band. We are trying to give you the flexibility you can control yourself. Yes, you can still do the big band because we have the auto sync feature baked in. Means if you want in autopilot mode, so be it. But what are we thinking works the, the better? is using your, using your CI solution to, to orchestrate more in a granuity, basically to control what you want. Like you can go to the staging very quickly, but you won't have approval staff for the production. So be it. Argo CD enables that and makes that very easy for you. All right. So now what I'm going to do is pivot to uh, the elephant in the room. I'm going to pull up the Kudi website. So I'm going to read the top of this. Akudi announces 4.5 million seed to modernize the cloud native tool chain with Argo. Number one, I remember seed rounds used to be like $50,000 that you raised from like <laughs> friends and family. So look, you're now raising A rounds and C rounds. Why leave into it? Why start a company around this? So it's actually not that complicated, very simple. It's basically a decision based on my own priorities. So Argo project is so successful because we spend so much effort in the community and we use it in production at Intuit. However, I, as the manager, I was struggling to balance in between the internal and external things. And as an engineer, you always have some struggle with priorities. That's common. Then I think this basically is not uh, sustainable for me to keep, to keep the Argo project as my side project. I have to make a choice at some time. So that's basically my decision with my co-founder, Jesse. So we want to put a company behind Argo that allow us to be full-time to work on Argo and also not just help Intuit. We can help many other companies to adopt Argo in a large scale and share our experience in a large scale. That's basically our mission. So we want the Acuity to be the enterprise company for Argo. That is our solo focus here. Awesome. And just like any other great company here as we wind down, Look, the open source project is super successful. I think one of the challenges you're going to have going forward is that you're going to have all these people who have also decided to build their business and back their companies behind Argo project. How do you deal with like stewardship? How do you collaborate with the community on the roadmap? What's coming forward for the project? Definitely. So we want to make the project, the next stage is more extensible, means we are introducing a plugin framework. I think we're talking about Argo workflow has plugin. We also talking about Argo CD has plugin, and we are that's basically the direction we want to open it up more. So we will help the people to getting the customized experience they want, but the core part should, should still stay with the open source, the core thing. We're talking about workflow engine, Argo CD as GitOps engine, Argo ROS as the deployment engine. That's basically our direction. So we definitely want to supporting others to do the innovation on top of that. That's why 
we are happy to partner with all the companies. If you want to have the customized experience, we know you might need it. Like find us, we are the expert in this area. Awesome. I think we're, look, we're out of time. So I think one of the big takeaways is that Argo sounds like it's going to be here to stay. And I think a lot of people in the community are going to be looking forward to things like Argo conformance, how to make sure that there's compatibility. And it sounds like you all are working on extensions. I mean, with that, we're going to wrap it up for today. Han, where can people find you if they want more information or follow along what you all are working on? Yeah, just find me in the CNCF Slack channel. You will always see me there. I am always trying to be helpful to answer your questions. And also, if you want to hit our website, then feel free to leave us a message. I'm happy to chat with you. Awesome. Later. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, guys. That was wonderful. Um, to the audience, if you'll have additional questions, find Hong in the Slack channel or join us in the general chat. If you haven't already, please fill out our survey so we can make Argo even better and ArgoCon 2022 even better in person. Thanks, y'all.